Hello and welcome to Real Basic TV, episode one. I'm your host, George Bonish. Uh, for those of you who've never tuned in before, Real Basic TV is a video podcast covering some of the latest tips and tricks for the Real Basic development environment. On today's episode, I'm going to be introducing the Real Basic IDE, and we're going to be getting familiar with uh, using the GUI and most of the built-in objects. Uh, we're going to go ahead and build a real simple application using the most basic objects included in Real Basic, like uh, windows, push buttons, check boxes, edit fields. Um, and then we're going to get comfortable with um, building our, our project into an, app into an actual application that, uh, that can be run. So if you have Real Basic installed, go ahead and open it up and let's get started. Uh, currently I'm using Real Basic 2007, but most recent versions of Real Basic should look pretty much similar to this. So uh, everything I do should be pretty universal. Um, first thing I'm going to go ahead and do, um, you'll notice the toolbar up here. It's pretty similar to a browser's toolbar. Um, I'm going to go ahead and make these buttons a bit smaller so that uh, so we can have a little bit more space to work with. Uh, and you can do the same thing as well if you wish. Um, to go ahead and do that, you can click or right click anywhere in this in this white space back here, and uh, you can choose any one of these for. For my preference, I'm going to go ahead and choose small icons, and you'll notice uh, the icons got smaller and we lost the text underneath it and underneath the uh, this address bar and the search bar here. And we have considerable considerable amount of uh, real estate to work with now. So this should be the first window that you see. Um, you'll notice again the the browser-like toolbar up top with the back and forward buttons and the rest of these. Um, you'll notice a, a tab here, and this is going to be where uh, our tab bar is. Real Basic uses a tab interface to switch between all the windows, so that makes it real handy. Um, this is our project pane. It's going to contain all um, our objects that are contained within our project. Any windows, mini bars, classes, um, or methods that we create, you're going to be able to um, to locate them here. It's basically like a, a bird's eye view of, of our, our current project or the application that we're building. Um, and then this pane over here, it's the property value pane. Um, anything that's clicked over here in our project pane, um, it's going to be referenced over here, the properties and values associated with it. Um, you're not going to need to worry about any of this right now. We're just going to get familiar with it. But you'll notice if I click here, window 1, um, all these properties um, will be displayed here along with their values. And you'll notice we have position properties and appearance properties and uh, the name of our object. But again, we're not going to worry about that for, for this episode. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, to tell you a little bit about, about a default project, each default project has these basic, um, these basic objects here, app, window 1, and menu bar 1. Uh, for this episode, let's just worry about window 1. So window 1 um, is the default window of the application. Whenever the user um, runs the program, window 1 is what's going to be the first window that pops up. So anything we're going to want to do in today's episode, we're going to be in window 1. Now we can always add more windows if we want, but um, for by default, Real Basic assigns um, window 1 as the default window for the application. So let's go ahead and open up window 1 by double-clicking on it and you'll notice that a new tab opened up top here and we can switch back to our project uh, window and our window one window here using these tabs we can also rearrange the tabs by clicking and dragging uh, you'll notice window one's on the left now I can drag it back and you can close tabs by clicking this little um, close button here okay so to cover um, a little bit about the the window one editing editing window here You'll notice you'll notice a um, a controls pane here on the left side. This is a list of all the built-in controls that Real Basic offers. You'll notice things like um, edit fields, combo boxes, check boxes. Uh, a lot of these things should look familiar to you if if um, you've ever used a web browser before. You know you have progress bars, buttons, pretty much um, pretty much the basic stuff. Um, here is our main design pane where um, most of our designing is going to be of the GUI of our of our program. You know, if we're going to add buttons or we're going to add input fields, this is where we're going to do it. You can resize everything here, you know, add text to your window, whatever you're going to need to do. 
Um, and then on the right side, again, we have another property value pane. Um, and like the other one, this references any objects that are selected within our design pane here. And you'll notice that um, window, this background window here, which is window 1, is currently selected. Uh, and you can notice that by these disclosure boxes around the perimeter. Um, now these, dis these disclosure boxes also um, serve the purpose of resizing handles. So you'll notice um, you can click and resize this window. But let's go ahead and keep it at the default for now, right about, um, I'd say, here. Um, and you'll notice again that the, the properties and values are, are reflected for the window here. Um, alrighty. Well, let's go ahead and um, start designing our application. Our first program is going to be very, very simple. Um, we're just going to be um, creating an input field and a couple of buttons, and we're going to ask the user to input a word. Um, we're going to make sure the user input an actual word, and then um, we're going to create a pop-up box, or as Real Basic calls it, a message box. Um, repeating the information back to the user. Um, then we're going to do a couple other stuff here, but let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, the first thing we're going to want to do is um, rename our window. You can see right now it's uh, labeled untitled. Um, and this is what's going to be on the, the top of the toolbar, uh, basically like it is here in the window whenever the user uh, runs the application. Um, there's two ways to do this really, but the easiest way would be to just reference it here in the property value pane. So you can go ahead and make sure your window is selected um, by clicking anywhere on the on the background or on the top here. And you'll notice here in the property value pane um, a property labeled title. And you'll see untitled here as, uh, as it is right here. So um, if you go ahead and select, uh, click once in here, we can rename it to whatever we want. And in my case, I'm going to name it realbasic.tv and you can hit the return key or the enter key to submit those changes and you'll notice that it changed right up top as well. Um, alrighty, the next thing we're going to do is add some text onto the screen to tell our user to, um, to enter in some text for us to read back to them. So we're going to come over here into our controls pane um, and locate the static text control. Uh, you'll notice it right here. And you'll see the two double A's right next to it. Uh, we can go ahead and... Now there's two ways to add um, to add controls to our window. We can either double click on it or click and drag. Um, in this case I'm going to go ahead and click and drag it. And you'll notice um, there's a little box where the text will appear. And you can just drag it anywhere under the window and drop it. And again you'll notice this one says untitled. Um, and that's fine for now. Uh, let's go ahead and position this where, where we're going to want it on the window. You'll notice that it has uh, these disclosure boxes around it, and it's the currently selected object. You can notice that by um, looking here in the property value pane and seeing the name static text 1. Um, you don't need to worry about the super or the index or anything right now. Let's go ahead and move um, our static text over to the top left hand side of the window. Uh, you'll see these little um, green bars that will appear. Now what these are is um, what Apple recommends um, recommends you place that object on the window, basically like their, their standard design uh, parameters. Uh, you don't have to follow those. I, I personally like them because they're, they're easier to manage your objects around um, your window. But we're going to go ahead and place it here at the 20 and 14 mark and you'll notice it, that, that the object kind of snaps to those lines. So you can go ahead and drag it there and release it. Um, okay, let's go ahead and change the text here from untitled to um, something more appropriate. Uh, in order to do that, again, there's two ways. For this episode, we're going to uh, do the, the easier way. Uh, go ahead and click on your object, make sure your object is clicked, and um, come over to the property value pane. And again, you'll notice here, um, unlike window one, this one is called text as opposed to title. So we can go ahead and either clicking here once you have the ability to change it or by clicking on this little um, circle with ellipses here it'll bring up a window where we can actually add a long value. Um, we can do it like this. Let's go ahead and have the user enter text 
and then we'll hit OK. And you'll notice it changes there as well. Alright, good. So the next thing we're going to want to do is um, add an input field. Well, before we do that, let's go ahead and resize um, this, this static text box here. You'll notice we have quite a bit of space here that we're not really going to use. So what we can do is grab this disclosure box and drag it in just a bit. Okay, that looks about good. So let's go ahead and grab that um, that edit field uh, from from our control pane here on the left. Um, and what an edit field is, it's basically another name for an input box. You'll notice it looks like this. Um, we can go ahead again and either double click or um, drag and drop it. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and double click so you can see what that'll do. And you'll see it added right here. Um, and again, you'll see these boxes and uh, the properties and values are referenced here on the right side. Let's go ahead and drag and drop this right to the right of the static text right here. And again, we're going to have a little um, snapping uh, going on. Uh, trying to Real Basic is trying to help us position this object to what it thinks is the best. And again, you don't have to follow those, but usually they're pretty helpful. Um, let's go ahead and position this a little bit to the left here. And when you have an object selected, you can also use your arrow keys on your keyboard to move uh, move the object around. Um, and let's go ahead and stretch um, the width of this out to the window there, right to the edge, 20. Now you notice we have a 20 spacing on the right side here, and then if we select um, our static text, we have a 20 spacing on the left there. So you'll see they're kind of they're evenly spaced. And if you have a uh, a set width that you you know specifically are wanting to enter, you can click on the edit field there and uh, come over here to the property value pane and select a width here. So if I wanted it specifically to be 180, I could click in there, change it to 180, and hit return, and it would resize my edit field. But I'm going to go ahead and keep it at 20 there. Okay. Um, so now we have some static text here, letting the user know what we want them to do and a place for them to enter that text. Now for um, for ease of use we're gonna go ahead and rename um, this control, this this edit field control here to something a bit more a bit more useful uh, so than edit field one. So we can click on the name field here and let's type something like um, FLD. Now FLD would be short for field. And generally whenever you have edit fields and you have lots of edit fields within your within your project, um, you start each one with, you know, FLD or field or whatever whatever you can remember. I personally like FLD. So we can do um, field text and then hit return to set that change. And the real purpose for a, an object's name um, is to reference it within within the program. So, you know, if we need to read data out of here later on, we would reference it using the uh, field text name. Um, and it's a lot easier to, to keep track of everything that way when you know you know exactly what it's what it's going to do by its name. Alright, the next step we're going to do is go ahead and add um, a couple of buttons, maybe a, an OK button and a reset button that'll uh, that'll clear this field out. So let's go ahead and find the push button control here. And you'll notice there's a it looks like this. And we can go ahead and double click to add that. And I'll move that right here. And you'll see that it snaps to the to the right side of that edit field to make sure they line up on the right. And let's add one more. And let's go ahead and drag that up here, and you'll notice that it lines up those two uh, those two push buttons together, and uh, we can go ahead and have an even spacing right there. All right, so let's go ahead. You'll notice we have untitled and untitled, and we want to change those obviously to something that the user would, you know, be more familiar with. So let's go ahead and click on the first one, and like the window property, and like the edit field property, and like the or I'm sorry, not the edit field, the static text property. Um, a push button has, you know, a property that'll change what's displayed here. And in this case, it's called the caption property. So let's go ahead and come over here and click on this. And we can change this to, um, let's see, OK. And hit return. 
and you'll notice it changes the uh, the title or the caption of this push button and this one this is the one we wanted to be the reset button so let's go ahead and click once there and rename this to reset and hit return um, so in this case the program we've built so far does nothing we've just pretty much built the uh, the GUI of the application so if we were to run this you know it wouldn't do anything it would just have a couple of buttons that when you pressed them you know they wouldn't do anything um, and we're gonna go ahead and do that in just a couple of seconds here let's go ahead and resize um, the window and bring it up bring it up closer to these buttons so so it looks a bit more like a, you know like it was designed properly so I can go ahead and select um, window one here in the background and grab this little disclosure box and drag it up and you'll notice that real basic will snap it once we get close there you go to 20 um, and it's going to be again similar to the top and the sides all right once we've built our application and you're ready to um, to test it uh, you know the design wise uh, we can go ahead and come up here to this little um, play button now there's a difference between um, running the project and building the project uh, whenever you run the project you're you're not actually building you know your final application you're just kinda building a test application to debug um, within real basic uh, this icon here is our build icon and that's gonna be whenever we're completely done and ready to you know upload the program or send it to to whoever um, we're building it for so let's go ahead and click this um, this run button here actually before we do that let's go ahead and uh, save this project so that we can have a copy of it in case you know anything were to uh, real basic were to crash or whatever um, whenever whenever we go ahead went ahead and debug this let's go ahead and go to file and save and I'm going to save this as real basic TV episode one okay now that it's saved you'll notice we have our file name up top here and we can go ahead and test it out so just go ahead and click this um, the debug button here and it'll compile it and launch our application alright you know, you'll notice that um, you know our program popped up here um, just like it looked like in the in the design pane there you'll see we can you know we can type here hello world but um, you can see that the buttons you know right now they don't really do anything um, also another thing to take note of you know you can move the window here around the around the screen but you'll um, notice that the maximize button here um, is disabled and there's no uh, resizing widget in the bottom right hand corner and it's going to be the same um, if you're using windows as well it's not going to have a maximize button and you're not going to be able to uh, resize the window so that's one thing to that we need to remember to go ahead and activate you know if if that's what we're going to need uh, for for the program um, so okay we know this compiles and and runs great and everything and you can see uh, you know our static text showed up our buttons click and our edit field selects so that's good we can go ahead and quit um, our debugging application here if you want to click up here and go to quit my application and it'll bring us right back to our design pane and uh, you know our control pane here um, so let's go ahead and uh, and change the resizing of this uh, the way real basic makes it very very easy the way we're gonna go ahead and do that um, make sure your window one is selected I mean, again, you can you know that by uh, these disclosure boxes in the background, or you can look in your property value pane here on the right and see whatever uh, name is you know name is in the value. Um, so once your window is selected, go uh, go ahead and come over to the right side here in the appearance menu, and you'll notice um, we have the resizable uh, property and the live resize property and the maximize button property. Now these all have to do with uh, the resizing of this window that's currently selected. Now we're going to want it to be resizable. The resizable property is simply, you know, if the window has the ability to be resized or not. So we're going to want to activate that. Um, and the maximize button value enables um, this maximize button right here. Um, now you'll notice whenever I check this maximize button um, property, that this button up here will activate and uh, become enabled. Now you see it got enabled. 
Now the live resize um, property uh, allows us, oh you also notice whenever we added the resizable property that a resizing widget appeared here in the bottom right hand corner. You can watch it again. Okay now the live resize property, what it is is there's two ways um, that the operating system can resize a window and you've probably noticed it before and you may not have but whenever you're resizing a window um, you know if, if live resize is enabled and you drag um, this corner right here out um, all the buttons and uh, the edit field if you have them set correctly will you know will stretch along with the window you know um, actually while you're dragging and resizing it now if live resize is disabled you're just gonna see uh, an outline of the window um, while you're dragging it until you release it and then once you release then you know all the buttons and the objects on the window will go ahead and resize with it um, now this there comes you know problems with um, live resize on windows and on other operating systems but for for now we'll go ahead and enable it you know uh, for the time being just just to show you what it does so now we have these activated let's go ahead and um, save it again you can you know, hit control s or command s and uh, let's debug it notice it's compiling and it's launched and again we have our debugging application here and you'll notice this time that the maximize button is enabled and our resizing handle is displayed on the bottom right hand corner now let me show you what happens whenever we drag this you notice it snapped open um, on the bottom there and we can't we can't drag it up anymore and also something uh, to note is that our our objects here our controls on the in the window don't you know don't follow the window they don't resize with the window so we're definitely going to want to change that and also whenever we're resizing the window you can see that we can resize it over the controls and that's definitely something we don't want to do um, so let's go ahead and fix all these and uh, and test it out again now I can show you uh, this this maximize button here what it does it just makes it you know full screen or whatever you can click it again and it'll uh, resize it but you notice again that the controls don't resize with the window and that's a problem we definitely need to fix that so go ahead and quit um, your debugging application now each each control in a window um, contains um, a property over here. Uh, I can show you, for example, the edit field property. I mean, the edit field control. You can see these lock left, lock top, lock right, and lock bottom controls right here. Um, what these do is it locks the control, whichever side you know the property is, locks that control to that side of the window. So if lock left were enabled um, and lock right were enabled, and it would lock the leftmost side of uh, the edit field to the left side of the window and would lock the right side of the edit field to the right side of the window and so that's what we're going to want to enable so we'll go ahead and check left and check right um, and I'll show you what that did and you'll notice we'll drag this here and you can see that it resizes now along with the window and if we maximize it, it stretches across the entire window. So that's good. So we have the edit field um, resizing pretty well. Okay, so now that our edit field works, um, we can go ahead and uh, set our buttons to to resize along with the window as well, or to uh, lock to the right side of the window, which is what we're going to want it to do. Um, so whenever you resize this window here, the buttons are going to go ahead and you know drag along the right with it so again like the edit field these buttons contain uh, you know the lock left and the lock right properties um, so you can go ahead and select each button here and instead of locking left and locking right we're gonna simply lock right um, I can show you now what locking left and locking right would do with a button it's gonna actually stretch the button out which is something we're not gonna want it to do um, and we'll go ahead and do the same thing with the left and the right on the OK button as well. Uh, let's go ahead and debug it. Now, again, like I said, you're gonna it's gonna look a little bit weird because we locked them to the left and to the right of the window, so they're gonna stretch out just like that, which is not what we want it to do. 
we want them simply to stay aligned with the right side and just follow the right side of the window as we as we resize it. So go ahead and quit your application here and uh, deselect the lock left on each one of these and let's save it and debug it again and now you'll notice that the window or that the buttons stay locked to the right side of the window as does the edit field so you can see you can get um, you know a feel for how um, locking to a uh, you know to a side of the window um, will make each each control react you know play around with it kind of get a feel for it still you know our buttons in our edit field don't do much right now um, but again we're still going to fix that so go ahead and quit your uh, debugging application here so now what we're going to want to do is uh, set a, a minimum uh, resizing width for our program for, for our window one so that it can't be you know it can't be resized over these buttons and over this text and over this edit field so go ahead and make sure that window one is selected in the background there and you'll notice over here our minimum width and minimum height properties uh, so let's go ahead and since our width right now is 304 which looks like a pretty good you know a pretty good width let's go ahead and set our minimum width to 304 as well now what this is doing is um, it's telling you know telling the application telling this window that the user cannot resize it any smaller than this right here so whenever we run the program um, you'll see I can drag it to the right um, up to maximum width here of 32,000 um, and a minimum of 304 which is which is what we have now so let's go ahead and test that out so you see we can drag it open but it stops me right there right at our 304 pixels and all the all the numbers all the sizes that you see um, in the properties pane are all going to be in uh, pixels measurement so let's go ahead and quit the application now so at this point we've simply built our interface we have the basic you know design of our program of our application what we're gonna what we're gonna want it to look like so let's let's add some code here um, to to make it do a little something so the first thing we're gonna do we're gonna have the user enter some text in here and when they hit the OK button we're gonna wanna have a pop-up window or real basic what it calls a message box pop-up displaying whatever they entered here in this edit field so in order to uh, edit the co uh, enter the code view of an object or a control you can do that in two ways you can either click on the control um, and if you come up here to the top left hand side of your window you'll notice these two buttons here you can either click this rightmost button to switch to code view and you can click the leftmost button to switch back or you can double click on the control to head right into the um, controls uh, code view here let's go ahead and switch back to the design view and rename these two buttons to something um, that we can you know remember a bit more easily than push button one and push button two so go ahead and make sure uh, you select the OK button here and come over to name and let's go ahead and name it BTN which is, uh, could be short for button OK and hit return and let's select the reset button and let's do BTN reset and hit return okay so now if we switch back over to the window one's code view you'll notice that we have BTN OK here and BTN reset here so this makes it a lot easier to to manage what we're working with now to explain a little bit about um, the code view with uh, with each control um, you'll notice first of all it's it's real simple to use you know there's these little disclosure triangles so you can hide um, each controls uh, functions there so to explain a little bit about um, how the code view works each control has a, a series of functions um, or events you know that that are called whenever whenever um, you know the control is is interacted with by the user or by the program itself now you see here um, the button controls have these different uh, methods these different events you know there's the action event there's a close event um, you know mouse down mouse enter now you're not going to need to worry about most of these right now for this episode we're just going to worry about the action event and what the action event is um, is whatever happens whenever the user 
uh, clicks on the button. So in our case, what we're going to want to do is read um, the data that's in um, this edit field right here, so the text that the user enters, and we're going to want to display it in a message box. So in order to do that, we're going to need a reference um, our edit field here, which is named field text. Um, we're going to need to reference the text property of it, which contains um, whatever the user has entered, and then we're going to need to create a message box around that. So the way we're going to do that um, is to use the call the message box function, by message box, and you'll notice that um, Real Basic will attempt to automatically complete. Um, a function that it knows. So you can see that uh, it tries a complete message box there and you can hit the tab key and it will automatically complete that for you. So the parameters as well, you can look down here at the bottom um, of the screen and you can see where it says uh, real basic, uh, it kind of disappeared there. But you can see it right at the bottom of the screen there. You can see the parameters of each function. So in this case message box is looking for um, a message as a string. So basically we need to pass it a string or or a line of text. And in our case um, the text property of field text happens to be a string. So let's do message box space. Now we need to reference our um, our edit field object our object. And again you can see it's trying to complete it there. So go ahead and hit tab and then hit the dot operator which will access all the uh, available properties of field text and if you're not sure what you want to want to access you can hit the tab key to bring up a list of of all the properties that are available for uh, for this control but we're not going to worry about that for now so we're just going to have field text dot text and so now what this is doing is this is passing the um, the text property or whatever the user has entered into this um, into this edit field to the message box function and whenever we pass it to that, the message box function is run and a message box will pop up. And this is all contained within the action function of the button, the OK button. So whenever the user um, presses the OK button, this line of code right here will be run. So let's go ahead and save this and um, uh, debug the program. You notice it's launching. OK. Now let's uh, type in hello world and go ahead and hit the OK button and there you go you see a message box with hello world exactly what we typed in here and it could change this to real basic TV hit OK and you notice real basic TV shows up there perfect so let's go ahead and quit that so now that we have our OK button working fairly well Let's go ahead and work on our, our reset button. Now what we're going to want the reset button to do is reset this text into here back to blank, back to what it is like in the initial state. Um, and in order to do that, it's a very simple process. We can go ahead and switch the code view of the reset button. I'm going to go ahead and double click on it. And again, we're in the action function here of the reset button. So now what we're going to want to do um, is edit fields contain you know, the text property um, and you can you can set what's the t what property you can set a property within uh, the code view by using the equals operator. So what we're going to do is reference the um, field text dot text property, and that is the the text that is contained within our edit field on window one. And then we use space equals, and then um, we're going to do open quotes and close quotes. And basically, what this is doing. Um, the, whatever's contained within quotations is what's going to be set as the, the text property. So I could put hello world here and since it's contained within the quotes uh, whenever you know the user were to hit reset uh, the, the edit field would change to hello world but in our case we just want to reset it. So let's go ahead and set it as blank um, and hit save and run the program and you'll see hello world hit OK and we still get the message box and reset resets our edit field see it clears it perfectly and you can hit it as many times as you want and uh, nothing bad will happen so let's go ahead and quit this again and let's switch back to our uh, design pane here 
So we're looking pretty good right now. Um, but what if the user um, doesn't enter any text in here and hits the OK button? They're just going to get a message box with, with a you know a blank screen, and we don't want that. So we want to make sure the user enters in some text. So um, what we're going to do is go ahead and switch back to the uh, OK button code view here. Um, and I'm going to kind of take you through a brief explanation of if, if statements here. Basically, an if statement um, is, is like a condition. If the condition is met or it's not met, then a certain action is taken. Um, and then there's an else operator um, that you can use with, with uh, the if statement. So you can have if a condition um, is true, uh, you know, then you run an action else and basically else means otherwise you do another action and then you have to close your if statement with an end if so it's basically like um, you're writing two conditions here so what we're going to want to do um, is go to the beginning of this message box here and bring it down a couple lines and let's make uh, a new if statement so it's type if um, field text dot text we want, again we want to reference you know the text that's contained within um, our edit field and then equals and then we're going to want to do open quotes and close quotes just like we did on the reset button so if it's blank then you use then and so here is where here's where we're going to want to you know tell the user hey you know you didn't input something go ahead and put something in there so let's 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 make a message box here so we'll do message box and then uh, here comes the quotes again you can open quotes say please enter some text and then don't forget to close the quotes now let's do an else so the else condition would be if there is actually something contained within our edit field so in that case the user has entered something and that action we want the message box with what they entered to be displayed so this is correct for for the else block and now let's go ahead and close out our if statement with an end if and let's save and let's go ahead and test it out so here we got hello world okay and we can reset it and then so now there's nothing contained within the edit field so the program should know that and should uh, respond with with that error message yep and there it is see please enter some text and keep resetting it and keep hitting OK um, but it's going to keep telling you that until you enter in some text and there it goes okay so let's go ahead and quit this application here and switch back to our design pane so earlier we um, you know we we edited our controls so that they would resize with the window but we only edit them to resize horizontally not vertically now what if the user you know wanted to enter in uh, a lot of data well we don't want it to simply scroll across we would want a, a multi-lined edit field you know simple like much like you know notepad or, or whatever you know we want to allow them to have um, the ability to have you know hit, hit the enter key or whatever so in order to do that let's go ahead and um, make this edit field a bit bigger and resize our window so in order to do that you just make sure window one is selected and use this disclosure box here and drag it I would say right about to uh, 250 you'll notice on the right side of the screen you can see the height moving okay at 251 I can go ahead and click here and set this to 250 and hit return and it'll set that property now we can go ahead and select these two buttons. Um, if you want to select more than one button, you can use hold down either the control key on a, on a PC on Windows or the command key on the Mac and select both buttons at once. Um, and drag this down here. And you'll notice again we have our uh, resizing helper there. And release that. And go ahead and click the edit field property or edit field control. And let's resize this as well, right about here. And it'll snap to a good size there okay now um, right now the edit field is still only one line if we were to type in it you just see it scrolling across um, edit field contain a property 
called the multi-line property and what that'll do is add a, a vertical scroll bar here on the right side of it that'll allow the user to you know scroll up and down depending on how much text they have so go ahead and select the edit field property and uh, you'll see the multi-line I'm sorry select the edit field control and you'll notice the multi-line property here let's go ahead and select that and you'll see that the vertical scroll bar um, was enabled there so we still have our um, you know the edit field is locked left and locked right and our buttons are locked right um, but now that the user is going to be uh, resizing up and down we're going to want to lock our edit field to the bottom as well otherwise it's not going to stretch to the bottom uh, and I'll go ahead and show you what that's going to look like right now so go ahead and save it and run and you'll see we have uh, you know we can still type in here um, but it, they only lock left both the um, the buttons and the I'm, I'm sorry lock right both the edit field and the buttons so go ahead and quit this um, and select our edit field and come over here and let's enable the lock button property or lock bottom property and select these two buttons and again we can use the uh, the multiple selector key that I explained about earlier and uh, you'll notice if they share a common property it'll be displayed here and we can just do lock bottom there okay let's go ahead and save that and run and you'll notice that um, the buttons stick to the bottom and so does the edit field but it's getting dragged along with the window there so what we're going to want to do in this case is lock it to the top as well so that it stretches in all directions let's go ahead and quit this application select the edit field and lock top now our edit field should stay locked with the whole window and now it can be resized and you see that our um, our minimum resizing variables are are, ta are taking into effect here and not allowing the user to to resize it too small but whenever we maximize the window you'll see that um, our edit field you know is maintained um, the appropriate size and our buttons are staying on the bottom right where we want them and let me show you what the multi-line um, multi-line text looks like so if we have Hello world. And I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this over and over. And you'll see on the right side our scroll bar is, you know, getting smaller. And we can scroll up and down. And our buttons will still work with uh, the edit field since we didn't change anything besides the, the size and the properties of it. And you'll see this is all the text contained in uh, in our field text object here and again we can reset it and it clears the the uh, edit field totally so let's go ahead and quit this application so now that we have our edit field and our buttons working the way we want them to work um, and our window resizing correctly let's go ahead and add one other control here to the window what we're going to want to add is a checkbox and what our checkbox is going to do um, we're going to have we're going to title it the enable checkbox um, and whenever there's a check in it we're going to have all these objects enabled and what enabled means is that the user can interact with them um, you know he can the user can type in uh, in the edit field the user can press these buttons um, and each each control contains an enabled uh, property you'll notice if I click uh, the OK button here you'll see the enabled property right there if I click the edit field you'll see the enable property right here um, and whenever something is enabled or disabled you'll notice that, that the color will change of it it'll, it'll be grayed out there and the user can't select that so instead of setting the property here in the properties pane uh, we're gonna make it dynamic and set it using the code uh, and actually you know change the code dynamically using the checkbox so go over here to your control pane and locate the checkbox control and let's go ahead and double click that to add it and you'll notice it added it right here and let's drag it right there and resize this just a bit okay so again the title of it is untitled um, just like most of the things are whenever they're added to to a window um, so make sure uh, the checkbox is selected and let's go ahead and come over here to the caption property 
and the caption property is just like the title properties of, um, of a window or you know the text properties or, or whatever so go ahead and re uh, rename the caption to enabled and hit return to set that and you can also see that the checkbox is not checked by default and we're gonna want our um, our objects our controls to be enabled by default so let's go ahead and select the checkbox and come over here to the value property and you will see it's under initial state so the initial state of the checkbox we're gonna want it to have a value so when I select this um, you can go ahead and watch this checkbox right here and you'll see that a check is gonna appear and you see whenever I enable this value there's a value in here so this is what the user is going to see whenever they first run the program. Um, the checkbox does nothing right now. I'm going to go ahead and show you that um, since we have no code in it, it's simply you know a blank checkbox. It's just just a design right now. So go ahead and quit this application. And like we did with the um, with these push buttons here, we're going to go ahead and double click on this checkbox to to go into the um, action pane. Or I'm sorry, the action method of the checkbox. So the way the action method works is whenever a user clicks the check button um, it toggles on and off. It toggle, it, it adds or removes the check um, and depending on um, either way if there's a check or there isn't a check the action code gets gets executed. So what we're going to do is check the actual button to see um, if there is a check mark there and depending on if there is or there is not we're going to want to enable or disable on the controls on the window. So let's go ahead and write an if block here, an if statement that's gonna check the status of our of our button. So first I'm gonna do if check enabled and what check enabled is um, again is the name of our control of our check button control dot value equals false then so what this if statement is saying is that um, if after the user clicked the button um, it became false so in other words if the user clicked the button and the check mark, check mark was removed then we're going to want to execute some code and in this case we're going to want to um, disable those three controls the button reset button ok and the field text controls we're going to want to disable them so in this case again like I was showing you before they each contain an enabled property um, and we're going to go and that's a boolean property and what a boolean property is it means it's um, it contains an either true or a false so we're going to want to go ahead and set those to false so enabled equals false and field text dot enabled equals false so now we're going to put our else block in here so um, the else uh, block will be called if the opposite of this is true so if there was not if after the user click the button the check mark was to appear we're going to want to re-enable all the controls so we're going to want to do the exact opposite of what's in here so I'm going to copy this and paste it here and set these all to true and don't forget to close your if statement here and save and let's go ahead and test this now you notice that our um, our button is enabled by default as well as our controls and everything still works here I can show you that okay and you still get the hello world message box and we can reset it and you know you still get to please enter some text but now whenever we hit this checkbox here um, we're going to be disabling you know the, the value property of this checkbox is going to be set to false so we're going to want to disable all this and you'll notice it does that and I can't you know, click in this edit field anywhere. I can't select any of these buttons. And the check box was uh, the check mark was removed from the box. So now, if we check it again, you notice that everything has been re-enabled. So you can see like that, like that. So the check box seems to work fine. Let's test it just to make sure. And we get hello world. So let's go ahead and quit this application and we can close our code editor here and switch back to our main design pane so we've built a pretty simple application here um, you know we have user input we have tech bo check boxes we have buttons we have some static text we have a little bit of everything um, that real basic you know some of the basic things that it offers and it's a pretty good start we've we've covered 
the resizing of a window um, and you know switching between the code views and design views so um, what I'd recommend to you is to play around with this play around with the the locking options of a button here or of an edit field you know add some more text add a couple edit fields um, you know play around with it that's really the best way to learn is to is to play around you know build something that that you would actually use so now finally I'm gonna go ahead and cover um, the actual building of the application you know creating the exe file or the app file um, on a Mac and to do that we're gonna wanna go um, we're gonna wanna tell real basic first of all what 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 operating system we're going to be compiling it for. So whether um, Windows or Linux or Mac, um, we can tell real basic that here. So if you go ahead and come up to the top of the window and go to project and move your mouse down to the build settings, you notice that right now um, since I'm on a Macintosh system, Mac OS 10 universal binary selected. Now if you're on Windows, I'm sure the Windows check here would be enabled um, and Linux same here and we can enable as many of these as we want to compile to but in my case in our case we're going to just um, build a you know a mac os universal binary here and then we can hit ok so now our settings are are all set and everything and i would recommend just go ahead and saving one more time um, and so now we're ready to to compile the final program the final application uh, in order to do that again go up to the project menu here and you'll see this little build application um, menu item. Now we can either do it through here or um, if you can remember from just a little while ago I showed you this build icon um, here and this is probably a little bit easier um, either one is fine it'll do the same thing so go ahead and click the build icon and you'll see it's compiling and here my uh, application was built and these are all the saves files <laughs> you can see um, and if we double click on this, our program will launch. Again, resizable. Oh, one thing that we didn't do actually here um, was uh, set the, the lock property of this checkbox. So good, we can go ahead and uh, change that now. So let's go ahead and quit this application. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and throw this in the trash here. Uh, let's go back here to our design window and select um, the check you know, a check enabled control here. And since we're going to want to lock it to the, let's do the left side of the window and the bottom so that whenever we, you know, resize it this way, it'll, it'll drop down with the window. So make sure it's selected and click the lock left and lock bottom properties and save. And let's run it one more time just to test. And you'll notice that it stays right where it should. Okay, so we can go ahead and quit this. Um, now that we know everything works right, let's go ahead and build the application one more time. And it'll show up right here. And again, everything works just as it should. Put hello world, be displayed, reset it. And everything works just as it should. So we've covered lots of basics here. Um, Make sure you register in the forums. You know, we can talk more about this if you have any questions, if you need any help, or even more ideas for other episodes. Please do go to the website and register um, and get your place on there. Um, and definitely stay tuned in the future for more episodes to come. For Real Basic TV, this is George Bonish. It's been great helping you guys out.